Yeah, Padre Ari, Rico, listen, it's like this. Uh, I don't know what to say. Don't poke the bear. Well, they poked him. So the bear is up, started training. We are ready for him, more than in time. Not today, not tomorrow, of course, because it's not possible. You know, there's been a lot of, Rico has been talking a lot of shit, you know, but we were met like two times before or something, and then he called off. But to be honest, maybe it was a serious decision. Uh, no, it was a wide decision for him to call it off, you know, he couldn't sleep, I don't know what happened. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, like I said, he's been talking a lot of shit, like Bada didn't fight any good fighters, I don't know, we just uh, beat Esma Lont easy, I think. Who did he beat? My opinion, he beat uh, Gita twice, but he trained with him before this two and a half years, so... Uh, who did he beat? Benny Adebuya. I don't know. You know, I could go on the list, on and on and on. He just last, the last time he was fighting with a guy. Oh, uh, break, he knocked this guy out in two rounds. But okay, listen, if anything happened, it will be happening now, you know, it's going to be good for the sports. You have this uh, this new champion, this young guy, eh? and you know you got the uh, the overall champion, the people's champion, the guy you know who's sitting in his in his uh, in his uh, who's sitting there in his chair with his crown on, and nobody's be able to touch him in years. It's going to be like the Pacquiao Mayweather fight, you know, a fight that drags on and on and on. And this is going to be good for kickboxing. It's going to be, uh, uh, it's going to attract a lot of uh, audience, even guys or people who doesn't want to be involved with kickboxing. And if it's going to be in a glory fight, on a glory card, you know, then they're going to have some good internet ratings. Because his last fight of butter his fight was, well, first of all, the internet was blown up for the first time since ages. His fight was watched at 1.8 million in the first week. <laughs> I don't know, these are numbers, serious numbers, mm. you know. And, uh, you know, uh, Rico called us out. We're ready to accept and put him back in his place. No, 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 it's already done. He has to do like six months, but uh, I'm, I think this going to be in like four years or something. So by the time he's going to be ready, I think. Well, for now, listen, uh, bottom line, Rico called us out. We're ready to accept. The only thing is uh, what, where and when and with who. You know, we're not afraid of him. He can come wherever he wants. He can come to Morocco. I doubt he, he, he wants this. <laughs> he can come to, if, if Grozny wants it, he can come there. We can go to Glory in Paris or in Belgium, you know, or wherever Glory wants. I don't think the U.S. is going to be a good thing. London, for instance, you know, you have to have a big city, a big stadium. It's going to be sold out, packed, I'm sure of it, and it's going to be good business for kickboxing, and at the end of the day, well, listen, we're still going to walk away number one. <laughs> no, look, if he knocks out Rico, then maybe some other Ricos wants to fight him, but everybody wants to fight Bader until, you know, the time is there. Uh, or, you know, when everybody's a big mouth until you look in his dark, deep eyes and think, what am I doing here, man? 
And the next time you know, you see the referee stand over you. And nothing is happening. This is going to be happening. We know it. Rico knows it. His trainer knows it. I don't care. You know, he said, but I didn't fight anything, anybody good. I don't know. I saw him fighting some guy out of the Ukraine. Nobody knew him. Knocking him down twice. Easy. It was too simple. And don't forget, you know, if you look at the stats, we had like double the fights and only one lost more. We fought everybody before Badr's prime, in his prime and after. Besides Rico, because he docked two times. Well, but he's living in Morocco. He's living in Morocco, you know, but, you know, he's a citizen of the world. Sometimes he's in Morocco, sometimes he's in Grozny. Yeah, well, we be on a daily base, in contact, you know, and sometimes he's busy, so I'll leave him alone. And he called me, he said, Mike, I miss you. How are you? What's happening? Or where are you? Last time he called me, I was in uh, Japan. And then afterwards he said, well, listen, did you saw what happened on television? I said, yes. I said, what do you think? I said, well, if you want to go for it, you know, I'm 100% behind you. I said, well, listen, this guy is not going to know <laughs> what's going to hit him and from where and when. And I think if we have, if we want to have a good fight, we should do this at the end of this year mm. because we need to prepare and do a lot of sparring because Rico is the most fit heavyweight and we have to be fit to challenge him, but he's just fit. We are fit and clever. Manchester October, oh, I think October, November, December. But you know, we we have uh, we have one offer. One one guy offered us already something. He offered. You know, we have to look into this. You know, I don't think this is gonna be a fusion. But. You know, I think if Glory is clever, Glory will do it. And maybe in Grozny they will do it. In Morocco they also are willing to do it. But I don't think Rico wants to come to Morocco. But if you want to poke the bear, you have to step into his cave, don't you? Because we're sitting there very comfortably at the number one spot. And he can say and do whatever he wants. But he never will be the number one until he beat us. He knows it, his trainer knows it, everybody knows it. If you talk to normal people, you know, they're all going to say, oh, kickboxing, oh, but Hari, they, they didn't see shit. They only know him. After Bader went out, came out of jail, we did the, the, the Grand Prix final. When Bader hurt his foot after his first fight. Uh, he torn his ligaments after his first fight. In his first fight, sorry. You know... But then this was the, there is no fight spot program better watched in Holland than that show. So that means something. If you want to have ratings, if you want to be known by different people, because it's not going to be like all the kickboxers tuned in at the same time. No, because they're tuned in already. We need the other guys, the guys who watch soccer, darts. Uh, tennis, volleyball, you know, swimming. I don't know. We need. We have to have these guys look at our sport and think. Well, that's a very fantastic sport. And for this kind of media uh, attention, you need a guy like Butter, because I'm no sure as hell Rico is not going to cut it. And you see it when he's fighting. How many people are watching? Besides his family. And good friends, of course. Yeah, that's the difference. And that's the extra mile you have to go. Oh, I think uh, it's going to be a very interesting fight between Johan and Nicky. Because, uh, oh, Johan is the kind of guy who's going to bring the fight to you and just keep on bringing it. You know, and then, well, we see what's happening, you know, and once 
Yo, when it's in and he's close, you know, and then Nicky's got his arms are too big, too long. But we also know that Nicky's got a good, he's a good counter puncher, so can go both ways, I think. Uh, Nicky fights best forward when he's pressing you. He's a, but I have to say, I have to also say that I see Nicky going backwards, doing some amazing stuff back in the days, you know. That's why I called him a natural, because he's got some natural movement, which I don't know if he's, he's even knowing this, but just and then knocking people out from different or strange angles. And that's what, when he's, when he's on his best. Well, I think the, the first two rounds, it's gonna be like, uh, who's gonna back him up? You know, but it doesn't mean if Konglo has to back up that he's losing the fight or otherwise, you know, it's just sometimes it can be a strategy. It's different because there are two different fighters, there are two... Uh, look, it's... How do you say it? It's... Um, well, you can take different roads to get to Rome, you know. Uh, you can go to the side where you can go from. It's just different, and uh, Nikki has to react different to this. But it was also different with Yuri Mess against Nikki. Uh, it was also different with Atukishenko against Nikki. And you know, they're all different fighters, and just uh, depends on the uh, on the form of the day if you can, can find the right key or not. He was. He did a very good job, and. Uh, yeah, and in the C class we also fought Nikki, but you know that's if you are living uh, in in a, a relatively small sport, you know, and you start out years ago and you keep on ending up meeting each other over and over again. But that's what happened if you're in there for a long time, if you're in there for the long haul, if you uh, are going to the if you're going to reach the top, you know, then you meet up again and again and again and again. So, this is what happened. Well, with him, I don't have any problems with Nicky. Nicky doesn't have any problems with me. We talk uh, on every occasion, once in a while. Uh, I'm the one who gave him the nickname, you know. And back in the day, I think it was then when my gym burned down in 2010, he just even came over to train with me once, but I didn't have a gym, so we went to uh, Beverwijk, uh, top team Beverwijk from Hans Nijmen and Dick Fry, their gym, we trained there, you know, and then he has something, you know, with traveling and everything. But he's also the one I've picked uh, many years ago and pointed out to Simon Rutz, same as Rico Verhoeven. You know, and then, but Nicky went to Golden Glory, someone, uh, and Rico went to Showtime. Well, I beg the difference. To, I think, you know, the maybe the judges are in favor of him because he's the champion for that long. But that's the only thing, I, only reason I can count is the same as you are playing soccer. I said, yeah, you made five goals and he made three goals, but you lost because you're wearing a red shirt. You know, things like this. So you, you didn't score with your head, you know. Like, look, it's different. Uh, the problem is, when you explain the rules on television, and then at the end of the fight, you need to adjust the rules, you know, to, to explain how it is that the rules you told before are not quite the same anymore after 20 minutes of fighting. And you know, that's... So that's a little bit strange, but, you know, it happened for the second time and maybe uh, we will meet up next year in, in, um, in Amsterdam again, I hope for the third time, and then hopefully one of the two will knock out and then you know it for sure, and he goes, okay, we have this, that, blah, blah, but at the end, 
Myrtle nog Nicky had, of Nicky nog Myrtle had, so he must be the better one of the two. Um, the, the, the most important thing, I think, about this last fight was that uh, the Rai was sold out, and sold out over again, because they added more seats and was sold out also. There were a lot of people who are not kickboxing fans, went home, you know, and uh, a happy person, because it was a night out for them, you know, and they could see real fighters in action, you know, and there were some good fights, there were some lesser fights. <laughs> And, uh, but, you know, you have to have the lesser fights to point out the good fights. You know, if you all got good fights, you don't know what is the standard. But, you know, and the, the sensation and the thrill was there. Everybody stood there till the last second. Uh, you know, so it was a promotion for the sport. And I think as kickboxers and as fighters, we should do more of these things. You know, we have to sell the fights. And we have to bring the fight. That's the only thing a fighter has to do, is to sell himself and bring the fight. And once you're going to do this, you know, we're all going to be good. You know, but if you don't want to sell the fight, say, no, I don't want to disrespect him. No, no, he's a, he's a good friend of mine. Yeah, listen, it's never going to work. So at least if, if a few people are doing it, you know, then the ball, the ball keeps rolling. Uh, I, you know, we had it in K1. You know, in the press conference, there are like 18 or 20 people sitting there. And like 15 or 16 people are saying the same thing. Well, I'm very happy to be here. I did my best and tomorrow's going to be a good fight. Oh, no, it's not like this. You know, finally I'm here. I trained my ass off. And tomorrow I'm going to knock his head off his body. I'm going to separate it tomorrow. At least I'm going to try it. And if not, okay, at least I tried. But I'm here to make, uh, to make amends. I'm here to show everybody what I'm capable of. I'm here to show everybody that I'm different than all the other idiots sitting here at the table. I'm here to fight because I'm a fighter. And otherwise, you're just a sports man, a good athlete. But that doesn't mean you're a fighter. Sometimes you lose a fight, but you win it anyway. You know, you lose the outcome, but you win respect. You know, you win uh, the audience, things like this. Okay. Then the next fight, you're in, you're training, you're preparing. And you'll be called up to fight Cedric uh, Dumbe. Okay, we go in that fight as the big favorite, of course. And then he's changing it. He's changing something in this fight. He's not that aggressive. He started out too slow. And that's what keeps ending him coming short in the rest of the fight because he started in a south pole position, gets a knee in the hip, he all his abdominal almost torn off, but you know that's no excuse because if you, you you're coming to fight or you're not, in my opinion. You know, then he couldn't move that good anymore, get a knee in the face. Oh, you know, by then you are two rounds behind. Then you grab the leg, almost knocked him out, and then the referee said, well, here in France, you cannot grab the leg. Well, it's just a glory rule, so. You know, so you, you, you're meeting up. Then you're losing the fight. And then people say, well, listen, you see, back there, it was just one time. Then we went like two weeks ago in BFL. We beat up Marco Piquet and knocked out Sam Brown, which are household fighters, well known fighters, fighters with good, uh, good routine, and you know, they've been around the block. They may not be the best fighters, but they are 
but even some Brahmi stuff. You know, so he defends himself a bit by this. And he's back on his way. You know, just standing in line, holding your tongue, till it's, time, till it's that time again. That's what happened. And these things happen. Sometimes you win. And sometimes you lose, but win anyway. And I think this 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 Nikki fight, you know, was the other way around. And these two Bay fighters also like, okay, listen, you're a very good fighter, but stick to your plan. You know, do the things you do, and it all will gonna be great. And you know, he went with this thing in his mind in his in his next tournament and win this tournament. Easy. I don't know about the Marani, I only know about Adam Chuk. I know you haven't seen anything from him yet, because this guy is something else. You know, you have to see, this is a guy who went away from his house from Ukraine, came like three, three and a half years ago to Holland, and uh, asking for a chance. You know, we took him in, you know, because I saw something in him. It was true, Artur Kuchenko. And, uh, you know, we start training and working and working. And then, you know, people didn't saw or realize how good this guy really is. And then, you know, he gets fights, you know, but in, in Holland, all the promoters ask, how much tickets does he sell? How much tables does he sell? Well, who does he know? He's here. He left everything behind. So... He get fights sometimes. I in Belgium, we went uh, and um, he keep he keeps on winning. But they give him low money, you know. Uh, they call them on a Friday evening. If you want, you can fight tomorrow. Okay, low money. We went to Morocco, you know. There was something with his visa, so he spent the night in jail. <coughs> Came out of jail, made the wait. <laughs> yeah. Went to the hotel, lie down for one hour, came out, and then went and beat this guy up in like uh, one round. Then uh, I got a call when I was in Morocco. Uh, look, uh, Mother Gregorian needs an opponent. Do you have somebody? And I called uh, Arthur at three o'clock in the afternoon. Can you fight Marat Gregorian? You need to be 70 kilos. He said, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to weigh myself. Stepped in the car at five. Came to Paris. A little, I don't know. For glory. And fight with Marat. Out of the blue. The only thing I ask, look, if he does take this fight, can he have one fight on his own, on his own uh, weight? You know, then he starts fighting on his own weight, you know, and... I don't think there's anybody in that weight category that can beat him. He's different. Well, listen, he can do he can do different things. He can just stand there uh, and defensive, but hit you all the time, like he did in the first two rounds with uh, Mosap. And then in the third round, when I said, "Listen, you have to, you know, bring in the fight more to him," he was all over him for three rounds, and after three rounds, he just looks like he just started. And that's because this is one guy, I tell him, listen, you're gonna be there nine o'clock in the gym in the morning, and you have to be ready. Eight, uh, 59, he's there, ready. What do I have to do? Okay, you know, if you tell him, you know, you do a push-up 100 times or something, or or a squat, you know, he does 100, he doesn't do 102, he doesn't do 98, he does just 100, and 100 good ones. You know, he's very dedicated, and uh, yeah, that's, that's something you don't see anymore these days, you know. A lot of people are, you know, sidestruck, you know, they'll, but for him, it's just, Fighting, training, eating, sleeping, fighting, training. You know? So that's, that's the difference between uh, him. And then he was fighting most of 
which is a very good fighter normally. But, you know, Serka is a guy you can put a tactic to him and he just sticks to this. And he just he just do the tactic and he's, he's believing in it, he's just doing it. Uh, you know, and that's what made Mozab look bad. But, you know, don't forget the fights he did before Mozab because it was very impressive how he gets this title shot. This guy's an enigma, you know. You can, you sometimes I sit with him and talk with him and you go, he don't, okay. And then, you know, sometimes he doesn't say a word for three days or something. You know, not to anybody. He always talks to me, but that's, that's him. And he also got some kind of degree in sports. You know, he can teach several things, I don't know. But <laughs> that's him.